name of God, the most beneficent, the most merciful, praise be to Him, the All-Knowing, the Creator and the Sustainer, I begin in His name. I begin in the name of Allah, and I send my peace and blessings upon Muhammad and his holy progeny. And I send my condolences to the Imam of my time, Imam al-Mahdi al-Muntadhar, may Allah hasten his reappearance on the martyrdom of the tragic occasion of his mother, Sayyida Fatima al zahra peace be upon her, in which it was reported that Imam al-Mahdi, peace be upon him, has said, in my mother, Fatima, in the daughter of the Messenger of Allah is an example for me. Al-Qa'im of Al-Muhammad, Imam Al-Mahdi, may Allah hasten his reappearance, speaks about his mother Fatima as being an uswa hasana for him. Tonight we will continue our journey in speaking about the events that happened towards Fatima to Zahra. Our time is very limited, so we will go straight to the events. We will first speak about the prophecies from Rasulullah peace be upon him and his holy family concerning the events that will happen towards Fatima to Zahra. Inshallah, we will begin with the first report and we will try our best to narrate all three reports in this chapter. The first report is found right here. And before this report, I want to narrate to you the ziyara or the beginning of the ziyara of Sayyidah Fatima to Zahra, peace be upon her. Imam al-Baqarah alayhi salam Peace be upon him says, Ya Mumtahana, Imtahanaki Allah, Qabla an yakhluqaki. He says, You, the one who was tried by Allah, whom had created you and tried you, tried you, tested you before he created you for this worldly life, and he found you successful and patient in your trials. This hadith alone, this ziyara by Imam al-Baqir, peace be upon him, when he visits his mother Fatima, this ziyara alone is more than enough to show us that Fatima to Zahra, peace be upon her, went through a madlumiya. This madlumiya, this oppression that she went through, and this test that was taken by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah took a covenant with the Ahlul Bayt. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took a covenant with the Ahlul Bayt and a promise to them. And he tested them in the world before this world. The world of Alam al dar the world of the particles and light, the world of the souls from before this universe. Allah tested Fatima and with this test, Fatima, peace be upon her, succeeded. And she succeeded in this test and she endured this test and was patient. Again, we will start now by narrating to you this beautiful report. This report is also found in the Bihar of Al-Alam Al-Majlisi, volume 43. Volume 43 of the Bihar, it's the volume that is specifically compiled by Alam al-Majlisi for what? For Sayyidah Fatima. We'll read to you the Nas, and with me, I want you to join me in reading this Nas together with me. The text says, it was reported by the Messenger of Allah wasallam. You see, <coughs> the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him and his holy family, when he went to his Mi'raj, when he ascended to the heavens, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him of what is going to happen to his Ahlul Bayt. And of these things that's going to happen to his Ahlul Bayt, here in this hadith, he begins to explain. First, he begins to speak about Sayyidah Fatima, peace be upon her. He begins to inform you of the manaqib of Fatima. He says, Fatima is my soul. Fatima is the heart that is between my chest. Fatima is the chief of all women. Fatima is the lady amongst all women and the best amongst all women. Lady Fatima, peace be upon her, she is the transcendent being that was created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the heavens. After he begins to narrate the manaqib and the merits of Fatima to Zahra, from the tongue of Rasulullah, peace be upon him, Rasulullah says this, he says, every time I look at my daughter Fatima, I begin to reminisce. I begin to remember what is going to happen after her. He says, Ka'anni. He says, I begin to remember what is going to happen to my Fatima. He says, I begin to see as if the shameful, lonely, and vile ones entered her house violating her and transgressing on her sanctity. 
He says, taking her rights, denying her her inheritance. Rasul al-A'zam, peace be upon him and his holy family, the apostle of Allah Muhammad is telling the people of what he was informed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He tells them, I see them as if these vile, shameful creatures entered the house of Fatima, transgressed her sanctity, ruined her, oppressed her, usurped her rights, denied her from the rightful inheritance that was given by Rasulullah. He says, breaking her ribs and causing her to miscarry her child. I see her calling out, Ya Abatah, Wa Muhammadah, calling out her father, O oh father, O oh Muhammad, and I see nobody coming to her aid. This is the prophecy of Rasulullah, peace be upon him, and his holy family concerning his mother Fatima. After me, she will be sad, distressed, disheveled, oppressed, terrorized. She will continue to weep. She will continue to weep. Why? Because she starts to remember. She starts to remember that at the time when her father was around her, she was respected and honored. And now after, after the fall and martyrdom of Rasulullah, peace be upon him and his holy family, she has, begin, she, she has been rejected and oppressed. She would remember her separation from Rasulullah. She would remember that Rasulullah used to be around her, now he's not here anymore. And she would remember the recitation of the voice of the Qur'an. She starts to remember the day when the revelation cut off from the house of Rasulullah. She starts to reminisce and remember that voice of the Qur'an when Rasulullah used to read the verses that came on to him from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She would feel forgotten and left over. She felt as she was, she felt herself living in solitude, living in solitude in her own city in the Medina of Rasulullah. Of course, during this time, Rasul, the angels of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would send angels towards my daughter Fatima. They would consult her, condole with her, speak to her. They will tell her, Ya Fatima, you have been chosen amongst all the women of the paradise. You have been chosen amongst all women of Allah's creations. So supplicate to Allah. Glorify Allah. Prostrate and bow down with those that bow down. These are all the words of Rasulullah. She would then feel pain and get very sick. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would send Maryam, the daughter of Imran, to also come to her and condole with her. Maryam would take care of her. Maryam would nurse her. Maryam would nurse my lady Fatima, and peace be upon her. She says, this is Rasulullah's words. Rasulullah says, Allah will take her to me. She will be the first from my family to die after me. She will come to me in a state of distress, afflicted in pain, suffering and be murdered. And I will say, may Allah curse. May Allah remove his mercy from those who oppressed her. From those who oppressed her denied her her rights. The Rasulullah would say, may Allah damn those who oppressed her, cursed her. The Messenger of Allah Muhammad, peace be upon him and his holy family. He would say this. He would say, may Allah remove his mercy from those who oppressed my daughter Fatima, from those who left her in distress, pain, anger and suffering. Then, when Rasulullah would read this dua, the angels would say, Ameen. This is the prophecy of Rasulullah, peace be upon him and his holy family, concerning his mother, Fatima al-Zahra'i, peace be upon her. 
the second report. The second report can be found in the book of Ibn Qulawai al-Qummi, Kamul al-Ziyarat. This book can be found online and it can be purchased. It is a book that's translated in English and you will find this hadith in English. It says, again, when Rasulullah, peace be upon him and his holy family, ascended to the far heavens on his mi'raj, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called out to him and he told him, O oh Muhammad, I am about to test you three tests. Do you accept? Rasulullah says, I submit to you, my Lord, for my patience and endurance only comes from you. We will skip to the part that we need, which is the third test. He says, the third test, O Muhammad, as for your brother, Ali ibn Abi Talib, he will be betrayed, oppressed, and murdered after you. His rights will be taken away. O oh Muhammad, do you accept? This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaking to Rasulullah, peace be upon him and his holy family. He tells them, do you accept? Rasulullah says, Inna lillah wa inna alayhi raja'un. Surely I accept. I accept this test and I will endure this test. Then he says, as for your daughter Fatima, she will be oppressed. Her rights will be taken away. Her inheritance that you gave her will be denied. The inheritance that you left her will be denied. She will be pregnant and she will be hit and she will miscarry her child. And from this, she will get sick and she will die. Rasulullah, peace be upon him and his holy family said, Ya Rabb, I accept. Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. Surely we are to Allah and to him we will return. For my patience and endurance is only from you, my Lord. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues speaking to Muhammad, peace be upon him and his holy family. He tells him, O oh Muhammad, again, as for your daughter, I will make her stand, listen, I will make her stand by my throne and the caller will say, Verily, O Fatima, Allah has made you judge his creations. Therefore, you are the hakim on that day. Judge whom you please. Whomever oppresses you, send them to the fires of hell. Whomever loves you, they may enter heaven. Verily, Allah says, I will accept your judgment of them. She will continue to look upon the courtyard of people. And when she sees that person that oppressed her, he will be taken straight towards the fires of hell. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues, the first person that will be judged for the oppression that he faced will be Al-Muhassin ibn Ali, alayhi salati was salam. The son of Ali ibn Abi Talib, the miscarried unborn child of Ali ibn Abi Talib, who died on that tragic day when they attacked the house of Fatima, followed by his murderer, Ibn al-Khattab, followed by Qunfud. They would be taken and they would be judged right in front of Fatima to Zahra, peace be upon her, and the judge will be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Fatima will be the one to make this judgment. They say they will be whipped with lashes, Lashes of fire. These lashes, if they are to hit the oceans from the far east and the far west, they would start to boil. If these lashes, if these lashes were to be whipped on a mountain, it would make them crumble. This is the adab of those who oppress Fatima to Zahra. Because the anger of Fatima is the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, there are many more prophecies and I have here many more prophecies from Rasulullah speaking to his household, gathering his household, telling them that the first person after me will be my daughter Fatima. Her ribs will be broken. She will be kicked on her stomach. She will be slapped on the face, followed by Ali ibn Abi Talib, and the sword of Ibn Muljam, followed by Al-Hasan, 
being stabbed in the leg and the poison that would be given followed by Abi Abdullah al Hussein, peace be upon him on the lands of Karbala he will be taken his family captive and he will be murdered in cold blood there's many prophecies but I want to narrate to you this hadith which is after the attack on the house of Fatima just so that you can see the status Sayyidah Fatima peace be upon her was when what? when? she was about to die the following hadith can be found in the Bihar of al Allam al-Majlisi you see Sayyidah Fatima peace be upon her she was the first woman in Islam to be put in a coffin An Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam in Fatima bint Rasulullah lamma qubid al-Nabi when Rasulullah sallallahu died and was martyred Fatima became very very weak she went to Asma ibn Umayyis she started telling her of the position she was in فَقَالَتْ فَاطِمَةً لِأَسْمَاءِ بِنْتُ عُمَيْسِ كَيْفَ أَصْنَعْ وَقَدْ صُرْتُ عَظِمًا قَدْ يَبَسَ الْجِلْدُ عَلَى الْعَظِمِ Do you know what this means? Sayyidah Fatima says, What do I do? How will they wrap me in the coffin? And men will hold me. When I have become bone, and my skin has dried up, and has become glued on my body to the point where I'm just bone, no muscle, no fat. Asma told Fatima to Zahra, the Abyssinians make coffins for women. I will ask them to make a coffin for you. Hence, Fatima to Zahra, a peace be upon her, was the first woman to be put in a coffin she was the first woman to be put in a coffin and this shows you the amount of pain Sayyidah Fatima al-Zahra went through to the point where her body was so weak she was just bone there was nothing, there's no meat, there's no flesh on her body what did they do to Fatima al-Zahra? we will see inshallah, we will read the tragedy of the attack on the door of Fatima bi ta'ala in the next episode. Peace be upon you my lady Fatima and may Allah hasten the reappearance of your awaited savior and insha'Allah he will show us your grave. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.